guys, thanks for joining me. Have you ever needed to cover a sofa and you didn't want to use the stretchy ones because they look bad as soon as you sit on them and you didn't want it to look like you just threw a sheet over it? Well, I have the answer for you. Today I'm going to show you how to make a fitted but removable slipcover for any size couch because you make your own pattern. So stick around if you want to learn how to make your own fitted sofa cover. The first part of the pattern that I'm going to make is going to be this piece that's going to have a seam right here at the top. Well, just maybe slightly to the back a little bit. But this, and it's going to come down here, and then it's going to go all the way down to the front. What I usually do is use a scrap fabric for this bottom part because it's not going to show, it's going to be under the seat. So I just use my nice fabric for this part and then the part that shows uh, in the front, which they do that anyway <laughs> in the factory so I might as well do that too so as you can see I've put my sheet here on the sofa and I've made sure that this back is even across the back of the sofa so I don't my pattern doesn't go wonky now next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick some straight pins in here to hold it in place so it doesn't move around on me Make sure to put quite a few pins in these curvy areas. And I'm not going to bother to pin the other side because really we're just going to make half of the pattern and double the fabric and, and cut it that way. That's easier. Now where your seat back meets the seat here, I just tuck it in just a little bit so that it's got enough room for the seat cushions to comfortably fit on there. Um, if we were to maybe do it like that, it'll get messed up at the bottom when I put the seat cushions on. So you want to make sure to kind of just tuck that in a little so it's got enough room. So what I'm going to do, I have my marker here. I'm going to mark where I want the seam, and then I'm going to, when I cut it, I'm gonna leave a little extra just for my seam allowance, but where I want the seam to actually end up, that is where my marking will be. And I'm gonna follow the seam that they have here. And then I'm going to note here that this needs to come together a bit. So that when I cut my fabric, I will cut those triangles to help me remember that. Now eventually I will have a side panel here that's going to come up and meet this. So now is the time for me to decide where I want that to meet. Okay. So actually I should probably go this way. Okay. So this is going to my side panel will come up and meet that seam there. I'm just going to continue around here marking where I want my seam to be. Keeping in mind my other panels will have to come and meet it. Meet it there.
need to clip my fabric a little bit so it can wrap around here. So if your sheet starts to pull tight, you just give it a couple clips and it should follow along the curves of the sofa just fine. As I make this curve here, I need to make sure that my fabric stays put and out of the way. So I am even pinning my little extra pieces back out of the way. Okay, now instead of marking this, my seam here, I want my nice fabric to come down and just at least enough so if there's any pulling, um, it won't come up to where the scrap fabric will be. So I'm gonna mark this about here. And I'm marking here where the arm meets the seat. I'm marking where I want my seam to be. As I make the curve here toward the front of the sofa, I need to clip my fabric again, otherwise it's not gonna wanna curve for me. So I'm gonna go right to the edge of my seam allowance or what I think it will be. Don't clip too much. And go ahead and pin this in place so I know that <clears throat> so I know that I'm marking it in the right place. So I'm just going to call this front bottom. And then I'm going to note where my scrap fabric is. I'm just going to say seat back arm is over here and now I just need to mark my center forgot to mark this bottom part where the seat comes around what we're going to have is a panel that goes right here okay so we just need to mark where these two meet Now because there's a lot of angles here, it doesn't want to lay down, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this area first so I can cut it to get the other area to lay down nicely for me. Now we're going to do the arm panels, so I've got some more of my sheet here, and I need to make sure that it goes all the way over and meets the seat seam that we just did. And I also need to make sure that it comes all the way to meet this part and also meet the back panel. Before I mark it, I need to keep in mind where my other seam is from this piece. So, try to get it about the same. This is always the tough area right here, but then after that you just follow the, the shape of the couch.
So now that I clipped it, I can pin it into place and it'll lay nicely for me while I'm trying to mark it out. Again, just following the same principles as the first time. Now I need to come up. This is the front of the arm, so I need to come up from the seat and make my seam where I want it here. I think I went in a little bit too much. I'd like to move it. So when I make a mistake, I just exit out so I don't get confused and move it. Now here's one of my tricky spots because I'm going to have a panel here and this panel is going to need to meet this panel and this panel, okay? So when I'm marking out my seam, I need to just keep that in mind of how I am planning to attach them. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and attach this arm panel to the bottom panel and then it'll just be one piece and then attach the front to that. Now I'm going to do this front of the arm. And of course, I'm going to pin it in place. Right, now I'm going to mark this seam using this as a guide because remember they have to meet up. Something to keep in mind, uh, depending on your sofa, mine tapers a little at the bottom. I think regardless of the shape, it would probably be wise to uh, make it so that it comes apart because it, yeah, it probably won't just pull on. Um, it'll need to come apart to be able to fit nicely and get to get, give you that fitted look, okay? But we, we need it to come apart. So that is something that I'm gonna need to plan for at this point, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow an extra flap here. I'll allow a little bit extra here for my Velcro. It won't make the piece any bigger, probably just so that I can hem it nicely. And I probably want that to begin about here. So I'll make a note. I'll just write Velcro right here. And then I'll note about where I want it to uh, stop. But on this piece of fabric, I will actually need to cut it larger because it'll have to wrap around. So let's see, make sure my beginning points are the same on both pattern pieces right there. And right here. So with this, I'll just need to allow a little extra flap like this. After I finish marking my pattern, I lay it down and just trim down my seam allowance to where I actually want it. I leave a little extra when I'm cutting it right on the sofa, uh, and then I lay them down and make sure that I get a nice even line around my pattern about where I want my seam to be. 
and excuse my drawing I am not talented artist here but then the next thing I do is kind of plan out what my pieces are and the order that I'm going to do them in okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the seat back which I'm calling B to the back of the sofa piece after I cut my fabric Making your own cording is super easy. You can get any kind of, I think you can get the cotton stuff at the fabric store in the upholstery section. This is just something that I had found at <clears throat> Goodwill and it's gonna work fine because it's sturdy. Um, if you're using a really thin fabric, it might show through, uh, you know, the little twisties might show through, but my fabric's thick enough where I don't think it's gonna be a problem. So I just cut myself about a three inch strip of fabric and I fold it over and it helps stay put if I pin it, but you probably wouldn't have to. And you just stitch, stitch it right along there and then you have your own cording. So when you get to the end here of your fabric and you want to make more, what I do is I just take my next piece, fold it over like that, and then continue stitching. Well, that is the process. I hope you found it interesting. One other thing, I did overstuff the cushions a little bit because I know they're gonna break down over time. So I gave them another layer of foam. And right now they do look a little overstuffed, but I know they'll break down fairly quickly. And this sofa has a, I don't have pillows for the back of this. If your sofa has those big pillows for a back, uh, I would just cover those the same way that we did the seat covers, the seat cushions, and that would work just fine. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time.